Hi guys, and welcome back to Reed's Readers with your host, Clinton Reed. This is part two of my Salem trip. This is actually the... Oh my god, let me grab the book. Don't know why I didn't have the book in hand. This is actually the events for Killing November by Adriana Mather, the signing event where we all had a blast got our book signed and the clip you're going to see or the, the clips that you're going to see is Adriana's speech at the thing I filmed the whole questions and everything and her whole everything because she's such a sweet and down to earth person and for those who've read How to Hang a Witch you know that her writing style is gorgeous so I feel like everybody just needed to hear the full thing. So that is what this video is all about. So I hope you guys like this clip. Um, if you haven't yet, hit that thumbs up. And if you like this video and you want more like it, hit that subscribe. And I will just talk to you guys later. Hope you enjoy the clip. Bye. Mwah. Anyway, so, a little bit about me. 
I started writing in 2013, and I actually didn't know when I started writing that I wanted to be an author, or that I wanted to write in general. I, at the time, I was working in film, and we had just started our production company, Bomba Pictures, in 2012, and we had filmed a film the previous year. And I went snowboarding, awesome, right? Except I fell and I broke both bones in my arm and my wrist. Oh. And now I have two plates, 12 screws. I don't set off metal detectors, so I'm thankful for that. But I, anyway, I wound up on my couch, or rather my mom's couch, because as soon as I realized I was super hurt, I was like, I need to go home. <laughs> I went home, and she took great care of me, but everything I was doing, and I'm one of those people who has about 20 bazillion projects going all the time, every day, trying to cram it in, all my projects stopped, and it was so depressing because if you're someone who's busy and all of a sudden you're sitting on a couch and you really can't do anything it was this it was this thing that i had to overcome mentally for myself and the moment that i did the moment that i accepted that things change and that things don't always happen the way that you expect them to and that you have to be okay going with life and its bumps i actually got a boost of creativity because I thought, I'm sitting here, what can I do while I'm sitting here? And one of the things that I could do was come up with a story. Now I had worked in film, and so I thought, I'll write a screenplay. No biggie, right? Um, I had written one screenplay before that. It was very funny. It had no plot. I was like, whatever, we can do this. It'll work out. Um, and so I was thinking about my my ancestor, Cotton Mather, as one does when they're on the couch, you know, in film witch trials. And I was like, you know, there's a really cool story there. I just don't know what it is yet. And I, so I started to brainstorm it out. And I told my husband that I wanted to write this book. And he was like, well, what's it about? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> what's it about? Because he's the writer in the family. And he's like, I don't know what your book's about. You need to figure that out for yourself. And I'm like, oh, no, this is way harder than I thought. So I, so fast forward a couple of months, and an actual idea started to form. It started to come to me in pieces the more that I thought about it. And I loved it, because even after I got better from having broken my arm. Writing was something I could do from my bed, my favorite place in the entire world. I now have an eight-month-old, and I don't sleep, so please, everyone, feel bad. <laughs> so I, here I was with this idea, and I thought, you know what? I will go to Salem. Now, some of you have heard me tell this story. Some of you may not. Mm -hmm. So bear with me if you've heard it. I, so I went to Salem, and I was looking for a book uh, about my ancestors, and specifically this one lineage book that's out of print from 1890. Elizabeth will appreciate that. <laughs> She's a historian. It's the only place in the entire country that would print this very one book for me was Salem, Massachusetts. <laughs> and a little bookstore, a uh, little indie bookstore, right? So I was like, okay, cool. I'm, I want to go to Salem. I want to check it out. It'll help with my story. I'll go to this bookstore. I'll get the lineage book. Show up. It's raining. I'm not prepared for the weather, as one should be in New England, but I was not. And I, I show up at the, at the location, and I look at the address on my phone, and I look up, and I'm like, hmm, this is a house. It's a house, and there's an iron gate. And I'm thinking, should I go in? And then I was like, it's raining. I'm going to that front door, and we'll just sort it out if it's someone's house, right? But so I go up. I knock on the door, and it opens by like an inch. And the person, this woman, peers out of the door, and she's like, yes. Uh, is this, is this a bookstore? She's like, yes. <laughs> and I'm thinking, she's going to open the door. But nothing happens. So I'm like, oh, I would like a book, please. <laughs> and she's like, okay. And she opens the door, flings it open. I follow her in. And 
is a house that is stacked with books. There's one room with furniture, but otherwise not so much. And there are staircases that start to stop. I am looking around and I'm thinking, this is the strangest thing I've ever seen. And it's awesome. <laughs> and then she starts telling me how people during Halloween come and camp out on her lawn, and George Washington had visited and slept in a room there, and so on and so forth. And I'm thinking, this? There is a story in Salem for sure. In fact, when I wrote my books, uh, especially How to Hang a Witch, so many people when I would travel around the country would ask me about Salem itself, and I would say, you gotta go visit this, it's great. But I realized that I had actually downplayed Salem and the quirkiness of it, because I don't think people would believe me. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't make it and it's 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 one of those situations, and I always giggled when people told me, like, it was great. I mean, the town was a little unrealistic, but besides that, and I was like, okay. I'm, I'm not going to argue. We'll just go visit. Go visit. So, uh, anyway, um, I go in and I order my book and I write down the information for her, uh, including my name, and she looks at the slip that I gave her. She looks up at me. She's like, nah, sir. <laughs> That's not a very popular name around here. And I was like, why? <laughs> Mm -hmm. digging and you're like, 
17 minutes, according to my camera. <laughs> yeah, I want to leave time for questions for you guys. I also want to be able to talk with you. I always, I'm a chit-chatter, so I will stand up here and tell you my life story for 12 years and never um, No, it's a problem. When I go to conferences, uh, it's usually I'm speaking on a stage, and writers are... By nature, we're introverts. I'm an introvert. I just got a wacky gene that says I like to public speak. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what's happening. It just looks like. um, And uh, you should see us all in the room together because 
everyone's like bracing for impact, you know? Like, we know that we're all gonna have to get up there and do this thing. And some of us are more comfortable than others. But there's always, you always feel like, oh, there's so much pressure. And so then after a couple of conferences, my love for public speaking kicked in and they would give me the mic and I was like, hello everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 10 more seconds. And I was like, oh my God, this is, what is going on? Okay, so anyway, now you all know, don't give me a microphone at your party. <laughs> or always give you the microphone at the parties. <laughs> One or the other. <laughs> um, I'm the type of person who dresses to match my books during my book launch. I'm that specific type of nerd. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's a little bit about my books and about how I started. Oh, right, I was telling you I didn't know I wanted to be a writer. Um, well, so I had, I wrote a page and a half of my very first book as a screenplay. And I was looking at it, and I was thinking, eh, this is okay. It's not great. Um, I don't. I feel like I don't know my character here. So why don't I write longhand for a little while, and then I'll come back and I'll write this screenplay. So I wrote ten pages, and I was like, this is kind of fun. And then I wrote twenty pages, and I was like, this is really kind of fun. And then I wrote a hundred pages, and I was like, I'm gonna write this book. <laughs> <laughs> And I've never written a hundred pages for anything ever. And at the time, I had definitely been working with story because I had been working in film. So for years, I had been doing story and acting and all of these things that helped me with my sort of knowledge of how you tell a story. But writing a book was so new. Um, and so when I told people in LA that I was going to write a book, I got a lot of, that's nice, and <laughs> how cute, and I was like, I am not cute, if there is one thing that I am not, it's cute, even though I'm in my pajamas right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, my life in my pajamas, okay. I, so, I thought, you know what, now that everyone has doubted the fact that I write a book, I'm not only going to write the sucker, I'm going to sell it, and this is going to happen. So, I wrote the book, and I was super proud. I was like, oh, I did it. It's the hardest thing. For anyone who writes, the hardest thing is actually finishing the draft. Um, and I gave it to a few industry professionals, and I was like, look at my baby, look what I did. And they were like, this is really good. Your voice is great, except your voice is YA. This book is not YA. You really just need to rewrite the whole thing. Ooh. And I was like, what? <laughs> Come again? <laughs> You're wrong, right? So another one gave them the book, read it, did the exact same thing. And I was like, Ugh. whole thing? They're like, well, it needs to be a YA plot. And this is a YA plot. Okay. Start back to the beginning. And I did. I threw out my entire book, all 300 pages. I started back at the very beginning. I wrote four outlines, the last of which was 30 pages long to get the story that I actually wanted. And then I wrote the book again from page one to the end. And that is the book that eventually got me an agent and sold to be how to handle it. So when people, when people ask what I've written before, I always say, well, a very bad uh, screenplay to start. <laughs> funny, though. I just want to <laughs> it's funny. Um, and, uh, and this book I wrote twice because you never really know what your path is going to be. And what I learned from rewriting this book was that if I had come up to this and said, no, definitely not. I like my story. I like my characters. I'll make adjustments, but I'm not going to throw it out. I'm not going to start over. If I had allowed my ego at that point to run the show, I would not be standing here with you guys today. I wouldn't have that book, and I wouldn't now have this book. So not being afraid to say, okay, I could be wrong. I can start over. I can be better, is what essentially made my entire career. So I'm always so grateful to that moment in time that I hadn't just dug my heels in. Um, but so many times those things have happened to me. Like I thought I wanted to go to a different college. And 
Andy. The college that I went to wound up being beyond perfect. Best friends that I will have for my entire life. Exactly the curriculum that I needed. And it's, we don't always, sometimes we think we want things and we don't know that what is waiting behind that breakdown or whatever it is, is something way better. So as I go through a very turbulent industry and as I go through all of these things and um, write new books and I always think about this, like when something goes wrong, what is there on the other side of it? How do I get through and get to that beautiful thing? And if it doesn't show up, I just eat a lot of candy. That's <laughs> my goal and that's perfectly fine solution. Exactly, that is my tiny human, my lack of sleep monster, the love of my life. <laughs> I know. Um, so I'm gonna be signing your books with that pen. <laughs> And I've also dressed him to match my <laughs> so uh, yes, could you do a really quick shout out to fan? This is running yes, live. To absolutely. Group. Yes. I oh, we're running live? Yes, yeah. the fan group. I didn't even know. So watch it. <laughs> oh, I didn't know either. <laughs> so yeah, I have this is wonderful, wonderful. I was trying I saw she was streaming, but I couldn't find her. Who have a Facebook group and it's called Fans Made Your Own Authors Book. And uh, they are the most supportive and the most wonderful people. And I have to say, when you write, you do it at home, not everyone does it in their bed. You do it at home by yourself. And when it goes out into the world, it's different. It's become, it's no longer yours. It's they everyone else's. They can love it, or they can hate it, or anything in between. And being okay with that is always a struggle at first because it was so personal to you and now it's something else entirely and so uh, they have made it so wonderful for me because they're always there they're always supportive so thank you family members for being there um yeah so anyway before i cry in public which is actually a good lot <laughs> Being a descendant, uh -huh. are there any stories that have been passed down, or did you have to uncover them all yourself? You know, it's an odd thing because I get all of my history from my father's parents, essentially, and their house is—they—they uh, uh, they have a tiny house, but it is just jam-packed with historical items. Like you open up drawers and you find Titanic letters, or you know, I. <laughs> I was, I always poke around because it's just too cool, the stuff is too cool, and my grandma doesn't mind, so it all worked out, but I, I was opening a drawer, and it was like, there's a button drawer, I'm like, oh cool, she's got lots of buttons, underneath it, there's a diary from the 1700s about someone talking about leaving their apple pie on the windowsill, and you're just like, what, this is amazing, you know, I have a book that I belong to my great grandmother, Adriana, Storm Haxton Mather, which is actually where I got his name, Haxton. And um, it belonged to her grandmother before her, also Adriana Lowe DeLong. And, they, and Adriana Lowe DeLong lived in Poughkeepsie. And Poughkeepsie is where my college was. Strangely enough. And I did not realize that. Long so coincidences. I had things like this. I had these. these Amazing little tidbits that I knew of. And I knew Cotton was an interesting character who had created a lot of chaos. Um, but I didn't know 
a big exact details of it. My grandmother, because there was so much history, because you could go to her door and there was a cane and there was an apology note on that cane from the 1800s about like, you know, so-and-so had wronged his friend and he hoped that he could make up for it with this cane, etc. Because that was everywhere, she didn't make a big deal about it. Like when I told her I found the Titanic letter, she was like, oh yeah. <laughs> Why did not tell me this? I write books, including our family history. How do you not tell me? She's like, I thought you knew. You know, so there's just no, there was no real, um, oh, let me sit you down and tell you everything about these types of things. So most of the research I did myself, um, and thankfully, when I wrote How to Hang a Witch, I, okay. the the historical society had not yet confirmed the location of the hanging. So, uh, thankfully, when I had written that book and when it was published, I got that right based on my research. And I was so grateful because I uh, love Alyssa, but it would have been very embarrassed if I had gotten it wrong. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, I still tell people it's better than a lot of non like nonfiction books well, about the time. It really is. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. It, the research was mostly my own. Um, many, many, many hours of going down the rabbit hole mm -hmm. with primary resources as much as are available. However, what I always tell people is that I, the primary research that is available is always skewed. So, in terms of the trials, it's almost entirely um, prominent men in the community. And so you don't really have written testimony from anyone who was disempowered, who didn't have any wealth, who wouldn't have been listened to in that time. So, and this often happens with history. So it's so important to me when I'm writing these sort of historical pieces that I include things to try to shine a light on that and how that might have changed the way that these stories are delivered. Anyone else? Is there going to be a third book with, um, <laughs> I don't know, okay. um, that is uh, up to my publisher, mostly, okay. and they've been loving to buy, recent, a young adult always goes in trends, and recently the trend has been, I, I don't know about my, or we can make her walk out of here. Uh, <laughs> oh, 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 it's mainly up to my publisher because I'm buying things in duologies. So that's been that's been a real trend. I and um, sometimes they expand, sometimes they don't. So I just, but if I do the third book in the witch series, I will write it about my ancestors who lived in Sleepy Hollow because oh. Oh. That's a good story. Please. We need. Um, you said when you started How to Hang a Witch, you didn't know what it was going to be about. Um, how did you, like, did you go, like, I'm going to sit down every day and, and until it comes to me? Or, like, how did you? Uh, yeah. um, so every story that I've ever written and all the ones that I have lined up to write that are, are a, a wisp of an idea. And then... The more that I think about them, and I found this to be true of just basically anything in my life, but the more energy I put towards them, like when I'm walking my dog or if I'm sitting down with my notepad, um, little bits and pieces come. Like I'll get a character that I want, or I'll think of a scene that's awesome, so I write it down. And sometimes I actually smush two book ideas together, two vague ones, and make a, a new one. Um, <laughs> but it's never it's never a fast process. Like I very rarely sit down and say like, oh, I have a big plot here. It's like I I will actually usually write ten pages or so still to get to know my character, and then decide other parts of my plot. So I'm one of those people who both plot things and pants things, as it's called, and uh, somewhere in between. So I don't always know every detail, which also means that I get to do 
a lot of revision. <laughs> My editor said, so if you could add or cut a hundred pages, <laughs> it still happens to me. So I would say the more plotting you do, the better, but still things change. And again, that's what I've learned. Like the more flexible you are, the better, especially with something creative. Because sometimes I write characters and they do not behave. <laughs> like I try so hard to put them in situations and it just goes completely wrong. So I don't know. Maybe I go Ash. I get paid to make people up. <laughs> I'm a little odd. <laughs> <laughs> as it were. Um yeah. Have you ever been inspired by like a movie space from this? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um the thing was the actually option. Um and then Sabrina came out. And so they put a pause on that. However, it's possible that it will continue. Um, I, uh, I would just which better. If that happens, her publisher is likely to want more books in the series. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So you get more and more seasons. Uh, exactly. <laughs> yes. And uh, then uh, Killing November is with producers right now. Oh. So, um, so we, shall, we shall see. Everyone keep your fingers crossed for me because if there's anything that is not well, no, it's just finger crossed. We were just finger crossed. <laughs> 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 Any other questions? Yes. Yeah. 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 So, in your writing, so we were walking around yesterday, and like it was really cool to see a lot, like how you described Samantha's house, and we were just like, that, that like you hit the nail on the head with that, and like you made this room is very Titanic esque feeling. <laughs> Did you do more like taking bits and pieces of what you saw around here to create the scenes and stuff, or did you just kind of think of it in your head and like vaguely see it and then it come to life and just like spark like, oh, that's it right there? Oh, no, I came here many times um, because it's a, a lot of fun. And every time I came here, something very bizarre happened to me. So I was getting a lot of water for my writing. I, the signing of the, I mean, the ordering of the book being the least bizarre of the incidences. So um, I'm also a big scary cat. And uh, when you accidentally wind up in haunted hotels where people have been murdered and et cetera, et cetera, you drink all the sherry and find out that my head covered. <laughs> um, so yeah, things like that kept happening when I came here. And I, I mean, it's so cool. And the fact that there are, are completely black houses, like I would never mm -hmm. think you could paint the house completely black and have it look good. And I'm like, what? This is like a freak. <laughs> So just that type of a thing really gave me a lot of myself for my story. Yeah, I believe in, I'm, I'm a big researcher. I'm actually, as, as it were, in school, I was always way better at math and science than I was at the humanities. So it's interesting that I wound up doing things that were completely opposite because the harder, I don't know, there might be like a problem here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the masochist. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, any other questions? And if you can't think of them now and you do come up with one and you want to ask me, please feel free. I'm, gonna be, I'm trying to leave time so that I can actually hang out with you guys because we have this wonderful spread of food. <laughs> oh, yes, young. How do you manage it all? A kid, a husband, a house? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that I'm here and I've only just got my shoes tied together is like a boom. This is great. I feel really good about this whole thing. I, it's, most days, I, I mean, <laughs> there, have been, there were times in my old neighborhood where I was so tired and so I was like, I will just walk the dog in my bathrobe. This is fine, right? And that's the worst look for my neighbors. Like, you should definitely not be on the street in your bathroom. And I'm like, I get it, but I have no time. <laughs> I don't know that I manage it, but somehow it all works out in the end and I think it's one of those things that if you just stay the course, you eventually get there. At least that's how I've always treated my life. It seems to be okay so far. So. You, yeah, just, but, I mean, it's really, I always, this is my personal theory, and um, who really knows, but I always thought that uh, whatever you give your energy to gets results. So, like, whatever you're spending your time on giving your energy to. And I tend towards anxiety. So if I go that direction and I get anxious and I just give my energy to my anxiety, I can spiral so fast. But if I go the other direction and refocus and put it towards something creative or towards something that I'm trying to 
accomplish, it gets there, even if it doesn't get there the way that I thought it would or in the time that I thought it would or whatever. So I really think that it's about like where I'm And even when I have a lot to do, it, that's, that's how I like doing my life anyway. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well, then I'll do. Oh, how did I find the Titanic? <laughs> I was going through my grandmother's desk, <laughs> and she was okay with that. But I, there was a stack of letters and old newspaper clippings, and they were everything from letters from the 1700s, from a boarding school type deal, to um, people going to visit each other and asking to please send pictures of your husband because they hadn't met their husband and the only way that they could see their cousin's husband was if they sent a physical picture. So things that just changed, it put me in a different time zone. And uh, in that stack, there was an envelope that said Titanic on it. And that is how I found the letter. But yeah, I was at my grandmother's house. I have a lot of Titanic books. You do? <laughs> <laughs> the Titanic is so cool. It's so interesting. And the crazy part is, the more you read, the less you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna hand the raffle over to my mom. She's gonna tell you what 